Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I welcome all our distinguished guests to this webinar today. And I, on behalf of the teams at MDF and Beanstalk, thank you all for taking your time out to attend. I'm Bikas Guvaju, and I'm with Market Development Facility in PNG, and I'm here as the Market Development Advisor. Uh, today, we are talking about open innovation to solve Papua New Guinea's most pressing agri-food challenges during this webinar. Uh, we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we collectively gather today the people of the nation and pay my respects to elders and leaders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to First Nations people present here today. Uh, so uh, before we move on to the main agenda for today's webinar, I would like to orient you all on some housekeeping rules for today's session. Uh, to begin with, uh, I request all the participants here to rename themselves. Uh, please follow the simple instructions on the screen to do so. Uh, when you re when you are renaming yourself, please include your name followed by the organization that you are representing. So you can just uh, write your name and with an underscore, you can write the name of the organization that you are representing today. Uh, the next thing I would like to request is for you to have your mobile devices ready as we will be beginning a very short survey, some interactive activity, wherein we would like your inputs and suggestions on some of the most you know, difficult challenges you are most determined to solve today. So please have your mobile devices ready. And if possible, you can just you know, have the browser ready on your mobile phones or also your laptop. And also for your information, today's session will be recorded and we will be sharing the recording to all those who have registered for this webinar today. And for those who could not make it, uh, we will also be share, emailing this recording along with other materials of this webinar. And if you have any questions and queries during the session itself, uh, I, I request you all to type them in the Q&A box that you will see on the bottom of your screen and we will get back with our response through email to all the questions that have been forwarded to us. So now uh, let's move on to the agenda uh, of today's webinar. But before that, uh, this is these are just uh, some of the people that have been closely involved in uh, making this uh, possible for today's webinar. Uh, we have all been working very hard and these are some of the people with, uh, you know, who have been working closely and Apart from these people who you see on the screen, there are other people also who have been involved in the background and have put in a lot of effort to make this possible today and in future as well. So now uh, let's move on to the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, we will first start with a brief introduction about market development facility and what the Graph PNG Pro partnership program is. Uh, we'll have some, uh, you know, background on the project itself and the graph challenge. Uh, after that, we will have a keynote address from industry partners on the challenge that we are addressing, trying to address today. Uh, apart from that, the team at the MDF and Beanstalk, we have been doing a lot of background work and have been talking to many experts and stakeholders in cocoa sector in PNG and abroad. And the summary and learnings from this will be presented to you during the learnings from challenge due diligence. And we will end today's webinar with a note on where we go from here. Uh, what I would like to tell you is that this is just the beginning of the work that we are doing here. And there are lots of other activities that will uh, follow the webinar today. So we will end with what are the next steps and what you can expect from the team. So now, uh, without any more delay, let's begin today's program. First, uh, let's start with an icebreaker. So for this, we will be using Slido. Uh, if you see on your screen, you will see a QR code which you can scan to log into Slido or alternatively, you can also go to www.slido.com and put in the registration number that appears uh, on this screen. Uh, and you can, the question for today's uh, se session is, what is the challenge that you are most determined to solve today? So can you 
can all of us in the room uh, put in some of the things that you are you know, determined to solve today, some challenges that you think needs to be solved to make this world a better place. So if you have any challenges that you can think of, please put in your challenges in the website. Yeah, I can see two participants typing already, which is good, yes. Yeah, so the first one is sustainable practices. Definitely sustainability is something that we have all been talking about. And these are some things that we need to solve. Improving farmer income, of course. MDF is an agricultural project. And in our effort, we are trying to you know, improve farmers' income through various activities and the interventions that we design with various stakeholders. So that's one of the challenges. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I can see four participants typing at the moment. Oh, beating traffic, yes. Yes, beating traffic has always been a you know, problem for all of us while coming to office, going back from office. Food security, yes. Subsistence mindset, definitely we want to uh, encourage commercial farming. Getting cocoa farmers out of poverty, of course, yes. That's the ultimate goal that we are trying to address today. Yeah, I can see more people typing in and I would request more to you know, give in their solution, uh, you know, suggestions as well. The more the uh, challenges, the better, because we can always talk about these things. Consistent extension services and support. Yep, that's something interesting as well. Extension services. Anything else? I can still see some more people typing in their challenges. Okay, let's just wait for a few more challenges to come in. Yeah, technology development, yes, better infrastructure in PNG context, definitely PNG, better infrastructure as in like for agriculture or for ag, uh, you know general infrastructure. That would be something interesting to talk about, food for thought. Yeah, industry collaboration, that's what we are looking at. Industry collaboration and cohesion. Every one of us needs to work together and you know, come together so that we can create the synergy to solve some of these challenges. Road connectivity from farmers to exporters. Yes, that's what leads to commercial agriculture, actually. You know, if farmers have access to market and for that road connectivity is the most important aspect. Okay, so that was very good participation and some very interesting challenges that needs to be solved. Uh, we will keep a record of the challenges that have been put in and thank you all for your wonderful participation. And now I request Mr. Adnan Falak, uh, Country Director, MDF at PNG to give a brief introduction on MDF and its work. Uh, so after this, this will be followed by Mr. Justin Ahmed talking taking us through the introduction on Beanstalk and the Graph PNG Partnership Program. So, uh, Mr. Falak, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bikash. Um, I'll just uh, quickly go over the, uh, <clears throat> the points, introduce MDF, um, what we are doing, why we are doing, and the relevance of Graph Challenge, especially in PNG's context. So uh, as uh, some of you know, uh, that Market Development Facility is an Australian government-funded uh, program and we are right now operational in seven countries across Indo-Pacific in Indo-Pacific region. We have just expanded into Tonga, Samoa, and Manuatu. How we work is basically that we support private sector to roll out uh, new products and services, which can create economic opportunities for the marginalized communities. In agriculture, in the context of agriculture, that's basically smallholders. In PNG, MDF has been supporting agribusinesses to roll out, uh, again, essential products and services that can uh, create opportunities for higher exports of high value commodities from PNG, because we believe that uh, the higher the value of exports from PNG, the better returns it would be for, it would ensure for all the market actors, including the primary producers, which is smallholders. Now, why we are doing it, and basically the reason is that we all know that PNG uh, agriculture market is characterized by 
um, a low export, um, um, a value of uh, low value, low volume export of commodity, commodities from PNG. What does this mean? This basically means that if you are exporting low value exports from PNG in terms of volume and quality, then the returns are also marginal, the returns are also small, and hence it dis disincentivizes smallholder as well as the other market actors in the, the market system to invest in their production systems. Hence, then this creates a vicious cycle in which uh, the market actors are caught where because exports are low value, the returns are low value, hence the investment is also of marginal and then the, uh, the, the market system, the agriculture sector, that's not growing or if it's growing, it's growing at a, at a smaller pace. This uh, problem or situation is further um, um, exasperated by the fact that the population growth is higher, which is now putting pressure on the land resources, on the water, on soil. The uh, land holdings are getting smaller and smaller and hence the production obviously is falling because small uh, land holdings are, uh, are not that productive as compared to the big land holdings. And then the climate change, there is an increased incidence of pest uh, attack we have seen in, in uh, last few years in PNG. We also have seen that there is now inconsistent rainfall patterns. There is inconsistent, uh, inconsistent um, weather, um, um, the, the weather, and hence all of this then adds up into putting more pressure on the smallholders when it comes to uh, their production systems, and it, this then affects the output of the market system, the agriculture market system in PNG. Now, we uh, market development facility, like other programs funded by Australian government, we um, our strategy is to work with private sector and other market actors. Uh, to uh, facilitate the transition of uh, export sector in PNG commodity export from low value to high value. Now, how we are doing this or how we are achieving this is by supporting the agribusinesses um, in cocoa, coffee, vanilla, uh, fresh produce, honey, to, uh, to improve the market uh, functions that are essential for the exports of high value um, of value commodities. And uh, these market functions involve extension, certifications, finance, technology, uh, marketing. And technology, uh, which brings us today here is key because technology is a cross cutting across all the market functions. It improves the ma other market functions like finance, it complements them. And we have seen that PNG is um, a technology starving country where you have, we have a lot of challenges, but we don't see a lot of technolo technological solutions available. And hence we feel that the platform like Draft Challenge um, is, is very relevant for PNG because that will allow um, uh, the stakeholders and market actors to identify challenges. And then by partnering with Beanstalk, we can bring and roll in solutions which can help market actors to address those key challenges and improve the productivity of agriculture and hence leading to the export of high value uh, commodities from PNG. Uh, thank you very much, over to you, Vikash. Thank you, Adnan. Uh, now I would like to move on to hand it over to Mr. Justin Ahmed, who's gonna take us through the graph challenge and introduce us to graph challenge and what the graph PNG 2022 is all about. Uh, Justin. Thanks very much, Bikash. Thanks, Anand, for um, sharing the context around MDF. And thanks to everybody who's um, joined here today, shared interest to the program, and already um, shared some of their learnings and, um, and, and experience with us to help us get started on this, on this initiative. Uh, my name is Justin Ahmed. I'm a director of Beanstalk AgTech, based in our Melbourne office. And we much of our work, um, our, our global work, outside of Australia. Yeah. Uh, just to, I'll start by just giving you a bit of a brief about who Beanstalk is, about what the Graft Challenge is and why we're doing it, and specifically share some detail around the Papua New Guinea program that we at Beanstalk are working with um, MDF on. So Beanstalk is an innovation agency that's dedicated to the agri-food sector across the Indo-Pacific, and we believe strongly that, um, that there's a a new wave of rising agribusiness leaders across the Indo-Pacific. We believe strongly that technology um, is releasing the new potential for um, democratization of the agriculture sector and a, a broader 
um, impact thesis. And we believe strongly in the ability to unlock innovation from everywhere. And that's why we work to support corporate agribusinesses, startups, governments, investors, and development programs all to try to work better together um, and to, to, to bring new open innovation practices to, to support the ag tech um, ecosystem development. Um, one of the key initiatives that we've been um, designing and deploying over the last several years is called the Graft Challenge. And that's what we're here to talk about today. What is Graft? It's a first of its kind land and launch program that's focused on scaling ag tech solutions from across the globe to solve clear, meaningful challenges in smallholder value chains. On one side, we work with agribusinesses and industry directly to leverage open innovation to look beyond their backyard, to help define clear challenge statements and in develop a pipeline of high potential innovation partners that can solve those solutions meaningfully. And on the other side, we work intensively with innovators, startups, scale-ups to attract them to new geographies to tackle new challenges and to help build them build long-term commercial foundations for success in new contexts. So like I said, this has been an initiative that we've been building over the past four years. It started in 2019 with a bilateral partnership between India and Australia, where we were focused on solving for uh, citrus and equipment utilization challenges in India, um, bringing Australian startups to solve some of those challenges and bringing Indian startups and innovators to solve some challenges around grain sensing and remote analytics in, in the Australian context. Since then, we've identified a real need around supporting commercial traction and helping agribusinesses to scale up in innovation and brought the program to Vietnam, where we worked over the course of 14 months with nearly 30 agribusinesses to bring nine different new technology providers from seven different countries to set up shop in Vietnam, hire staff, um, adapt their technology to new contexts, and actually establish um, commercial trials and agreements. And now we're leveraging that learning and program developed to date um, into a, a program in partnership with MDF under the PNG Oz partnership uh, to deploy in the cocoa sector here in Papua New Guinea. And we're just at the beginning of that, that stage today. Just a brief snapshot of some of the impact that we're proud of uh, to date. We've been lucky enough through this program to work with over 50 different industry partners, so that being corporate agribusinesses or industry associations that are helping us to define critical challenge and bring technology in. Um, we've com a, a critical component and that we are passionate about at, through this program is in helping technology to actually take root on the ground. And we've been able to facilitate eight different technology trials over the course of the three programs previous to this. For corporate partners, we've established a, a significant amount of brand equity in terms of bringing online views to the program and establishing our corporate partners as vanguards of innovation in the geographies that they work. But we've also been able to support actually technology providers to really advance their solutions and take root. So, you know, as an example, um, the collective cohort of 14 innovators that we've supported have raised over $110 million in capital since um, coming through our program. And we, we hope to you know, support them in building their, their story and journey and actually building commercial partnerships on their path to scale. I just wanted to share a few very specific um, stories of a partnership that have been developed in the program. Uh, the, fir the first you see on Regrow, which was Florisat at the time, we were working with UPL to help them um, solve some critical challenges in the cotton and Kinu value chain. We helped them to link up with Regrow, a provider of advanced analytics in the agri space, and helped to actually them, them to envision and then craft a, a dashboard and an approach to trial their um, analytics and planning solution around um, spray uh, optimization for smallholder farms and cotton and kunu farms in Punjab and Haryana. We worked with Jalatech, an Indonesian aquatech provider in Vietnam, uh, from Indonesia, to help them grow into Vietnam. 
help them to make connections within the Vietnam Sustainable Shrimp Association um, to adapt their app into to, to, to Viet, the Vietnamese context and actually to Vietnam, really to help solve water quality, using their aquatech solution to solve water quality challenges in the Mekong region, and eventually helping them to scale up a trial with the Kamau government to actually deploy their solution in Vietnam with 300 farmers, which has been thus far uh, expanded to three new provinces. So really excited for them in that partnership. And also from our Vietnam program, an organization called Agnext, um, an end-to-end -end quality management solution leveraging AI to make quicker, more accurate decisions with regards to commodity quality, um, help them to actually build plans to build a team and to establish an R&D and operations excellence center in Vietnam, their first growth market outside of India. And they're now actually collaborating with Taiwan to revolutionize quality management in the tapioca space for them. So another that we're really proud of being associated with and supporting. And through this experience, we thought it would be prudent just to share some of the key learnings that we've picked up along the way in this effort. So the first is around really getting the challenge right and knowing the solution will come. We are a strong believer in the fact that there are thousands of solutions out there that are looking for the right challenge. And we overinvest with our corporate partners on making sure that we are focusing on a challenge that is, is solvable, is meaningful, and that technology is really fit to address. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the challenge due diligence process that, that um, my colleague Will will speak through in a few minutes. The second is something we say around the starting line to determining the finish line. We realize there's an end goal around deploying technology um, and helping that to actually improve the lives and livelihoods of smallholders in a cross value chain. But the path to that looks very different depending on the starting point. So we invest upfront time working with both innovators and our corporate partners to understand what, what is the level of innovation readiness, of go-to-market readiness, and really there the, to help us identify the key constraints that we work on in building those commercial partnerships. The third is that we say it takes a village. And you know, what we mean by this is you know, it's easy to think through the supply and the demand side of innovation. What we realize is that it's a whole bunch of that transaction cost in the middle. All of the ecosystem enablers, the tech, technical service providers, the, the folks that actually make a, a commercial relationship work. And we help our innovators and commercial um, partners to actually build those networks and of support in the middle that, that help to facilitate a meaningful relationship. The fourth is on building on common ground. You know, we're really often taking um, innovators and uh, corporate agribusiness partners that work in very different contexts. The focus for us is on finding a shared common ground, which is particularly the, the challenge and the intended solution and helping to build from there. And the last but a really important learning that we've picked up along the way is that cash is not king. Um, we've seen and taken part in many different sort of innovation tech transfer programs where it's a, a, a major uh, benefits and often a kind of key prize is around a, a cash prize and throwing money at the, the challenge. And there's a time and place for that, surely. But what we do understand is that it is often more impactful for both our corporate partners and our innovator partners alike to provide in-kind strategic support to help them to, um, to navigate the industry and to make best use of the resources that they do have to make real solutions work. And so all of that has really been encompassed to the way that we approach um, our program. We take a laser focus on real meaningful commercial incomes and we're invested in making relationships that are built to scale. We leverage a playbook of open innovation um, techniques and, and templates, things that we've built along the way that we know are, are built to help technology take root in new contexts. We focus on leveraging global breadth, our network of experts, of startup ecosystem enablers to help us bring the best of global innovation to these challenges, but also local depth, that network of industry and technical partners that will help us best to help technology take root. We focus on bringing an ecosystem orientation 
so that we're building partnerships that will last far beyond the program's lifetime and bring the, the, a network of capabilities to bear to help uh, technology transfer. And we focus on taking a challenge-led approach, over investing in identifying the bottlenecks that are keeping technology from taking root. So that's the global context. Just to give you a couple of minutes to talk about what we're doing in Papua New Guinea. So in, uh, in PNG, this is our opportunity to design and deploy the first open innovation in ag tech initiative in the country. And we don't take that lightly. Uh, on one side, we're focused on building real visibility and partnerships for Papua New Guinea agribusinesses to global innovation ecosystem with the end goal of by Q1 of next year, actually establishing real technology trials um, that can demonstrate the high potential for meaningful technology transfer. On the other side, we're really building a case and a roadmap to bring ag tech innovators actively to this market and to look into grow into to this space. So over the next six months or so, um, we are going to be in running up what we're calling a pilot program here in the cocoa sector and really encourage you to contribute and keep eyes on that. From Q2 of 20, 2023 forward, we're really keen to understand and think through how we can tackle other cocoa sector challenges um, and even beyond how we can adapt to this initiative to other contexts outside of the cocoa sector. So many of you here are, um, are um, from adjacent industries or have a exposure elsewhere in the, the horticulture and broader agriculture space. We really would love to initiate some discussions that help you understand and help understand from you where a pro program like this can continue to support and encourage you to watch as we go. So where are we now? This is really a three-phase solution, a three-phase program. Like I said, we, we talked a lot about over-investing in the challenge discovery and development, uh, defining the challenges. This is where we are now and have been for the past few weeks. This is where we establish kind of our critical industry and knowledge partnerships. It's where we conduct our challenge due diligence, due diligence to really decompose and uh, pick apart a, a challenge statement. And it's where we define what we're going to go out to market with. From September to November, we're going to be focused on actually sourcing solutions. And we do that through a push um, in, in terms of actually developing a digital campaign that will engage innovators from across the globe and leveraging our, our networks uh, to, to make that happen. Um, but also a poll actively engaging um, innovators who we've previously scouted have high potential to solve the challenge that we end up focusing on. And then in, from the course of December to February of next year, we're gonna be focusing on implementing this challenge and actually trialing uh, the solutions. So first, um, establishing a bit of a boot camp where we um, help the innovators that we're working with to better understand the value chain within which they're operating and to, to build the right connections to help them grow into the space. Second, working directly with those innovators and our uh, and our corporate partners to design um, trials with real success metrics that we can help define what is uh, what a success looks like. And thirdly, actually facilitating on-site visits for those uh, those innovators, where we can actually clearly plan for and or kick off um, trials of meaningful solutions. So watch this space. Um, we are having a call now for you know, industry partners, for knowledge partners, for those that think that they can benefit from their participation in the program or would like to be involved. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll be in market in early September and having a, a series of discussions. So please uh, do reach out directly so we, we can discuss how we can help you to solve some of the primary challenges in your supply chain. Um, with that, I'll hand it back to Vikash, um, who can, yeah, thanks Vikash, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Adnan and Justin, for those introductions and also lots of insights on MDF and also the Graft PNG program. Uh, the next in the agenda, we had like a keynote address from industry partners. Uh, we are hoping to have uh, Mr. Anthony Vigil here with us today to give a keynote speech on cocoa sector because that's the sector that we are uh looking at and trying to address challenges in that sector uh however uh he could not 
make it due to his busy uh, busy schedule so we have already spoken to him uh, previously as well and we will definitely uh, meet him in person in future as well and also work closely with the coco board in png and look for meaningful uh, collaboration opportunities to solve some of the challenges in the coco sector together uh, so now uh, let's just move on yeah the third thing in our agenda today is learnings from the challenge due diligence process uh, as i had mentioned earlier you know we have been doing a lot of background work and a lot of meetings have been conducted to collect information and we have done a lot of uh, literature review as well so there are certain learnings that we have gathered from these meetings and uh, the uh, literature review that we have done so i would request uh, will from beanstalk to take us through the learnings from the challenge due diligence process will Thanks, Vikash, and um, good morning to you all. It's, it's really great to, to um, kind of launch this and, and have this onboarding session, and I use this as an opportunity to share more about our program and uh, also share about what we've been learning already across, um, across the whole value chain. So um, yeah, really great to be here and really great to see everyone here today. Um, as Justin mentioned, we're, we're at the very early part of our um, at the very early part of our program, the GRAPH program. And we do place a, a strong emphasis on, on the challenge discovery piece. So in terms of um, challenge due diligence, um, what are we talking about here and what's our process and how, how, does, how do we use uh, uh, this process to help set us up for success and um, a much more meaningful engagement with potential solutions? Um, our challenge due diligence process is really around understanding who are the key actors, uh, and what does the challenges um, in terms of the formats of these challenges look like across the value chain? Uh, the, the main intention here is for us to have a, a deepened understanding of, um, of the challenge. What are some of the potential barriers, uh, drivers, and also the root causes around uh, smoke tank as a challenge? And how do we compartmentalize and parameterize it in a way so that we take a whole of system approach um, and a whole of value chain approach to solving this problem? So that's um, the emphasis that we're bringing to um, the challenge discovery and challenge diligence process. Next slide. And typically when we go through this process, um, we think of this like a double diamond approach. Now I'm not sure how, how uh, whether you've seen the double diamond approach applied in other scenarios, but for us, what this means is we use this opportunity to, um, to start with a premise and hypothesis around uh, what is around smoke taint, the challenge of smoke taint in the, in the processing stage of the value chain. Um, but we want to go wide and we want to be breaking down barriers and silos, not just in the industry, but region, to, to have conversations with um, many industry leaders, knowledge partners, um, academics, practitioners, and, and farmers and growers in the region to understand what the problem looks like and, um, and going wide. So we're, we're really thinking outside the box here and uh, making sure that we're, we're sourcing um, and understanding the challenges across the value chain. And we've discovered five, 25 of them that have come up consistently. So we're not, um, that there is certainly more than 25, but these are the ones that we've been constantly hearing and the thematics that we're hearing across the value chain. The next step for us is about refining that, placing our bets on some of these challenge areas that we're hearing lots about, and how do we start, begin focusing in on that. That's where we're at now. You can see the purple area. We've got some clarified challenges and where we're going next, um, next month is going in market to do a deeper dive and making sure that we can validate these uh, challenges with the, the value chain actors and turning what is these this desktop and explicit information from our key informant interviews and understanding it in a real life context and scenario and making sure that we're separating perceived versus real challenges. Um, so this is, the, this is the validation process that we'll be taking um, in market. And again, as Justin mentioned, really keen to be uh, hopefully seeing some of you guys there uh, when in market. And the final step of this challenge due diligence process is about clearly prioritizing up to three challenges and to ensure that we're attracting, that we're defining and parameterizing in a way 
that we are attracting solutions, not just from the agriculture field, not just from the Pacific, but also from, from the global innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. So um, that's where we'll hope to get to. And that's only stage one. So it's for us, it's an exciting journey because we're doing lots of learning, but we're also um, uh, engaging a lot of uh, um, players across the, uh, actors across the ecosystem that are interested to take part. Next slide. We've already um, had the opportunity and um, to have more than 20 conversations across the field. And so really want to just emphasize here that we're really grateful for the conversations and the, how forthcoming it's been um, across uh, players in the ecosystem. I've just, we've just put up a, a couple of names, but um, a lot of other industry players from university and researchers have also been involved in this process. And so, um, um, and we've been having conversations with agribusinesses that are, you know, exporters and importers and buyers of, um, of cocoa in the region. I've spoken to government agencies and industry bodies that, um, that are managing and working closely with the industry. Um, we've of course spoken to a number of development programs uh, in the region that have either worked on this challenge of uh, smoke taint or are kind of already engaging with smallholder farmers on extension activities and so forth spoken to a number of researchers as well, plant pathologists and, and so forth that really kind of have been working in this field for many years and trying to understand it from multiple lenses as well. So um, this is just a, an opportunity to say thanks to all of those that have already been part of the journey and have been uh, very forthcoming sharing uh, your insights and experiences. Next slide. In terms of um, where we started, um, you know, where we all collectively were focused on and what we were hearing is that um, we focused on this challenge around smoke taint. So let me just, just, just read this aloud here. PNG smallholder farmers need an alternative and sustainable solution to oven drying that produces high quality cocoa. And the reason why this is important is because this helps to command price premiums, reduce waste, and thereby increase smallholder farmer income. It is also important for the medium to long term to ensure we continue to have market access and, and grow market access into new high value markets. And so that's this, that was the starting premise of um, our conversations and how we looked at uh, and, and the lens. And moving on to the next slide, if we, if we take that premise, we're very much focused in on uh, quite a narrow part of the, the value chain step around primary processing. Um, and so we can see in the, in the fermentation and drying uh, at the fermentary um, part of the value chain, um, it, it seems like a, a very narrow focus. And there's been already a lot of discussion around the types of technologies and approaches that can tackle it at that level. But what we quickly understand through our discovery process on the next slide is that the cocoa value chain is quite, quite complex across the value chain stages. Um, the, the crop goes through, it's a whole range of transformation through the value chain. And so um, different points in which cocoa smoke, uh, smoke taint as a challenge uh, affects across that value chain. There are certainly many key actors across the value chain from agri input companies, industry bodies and groups that regulate the industry, uh, smallholder farmers and cooperatives that operate at the smaller and medium and large end of scale. Um, we, we know that there's license for uh, fermentation centers and, and providers. Um, importantly, the aggregators and wholesalers and buyers that um, take part in, in the procurement and offtake um, and the international traders. And then there's also at the market end, many procurers, exporters, chocolatiers and manufacturers that um, are actively um, engaging with Papua New Guinea cocoa sector. And on the key activity side, we're seeing that you know, these are some of the pockets of um, activities that occur across the value chain. Um, so for those in the industry already uh, here today, this is, this is on the back of your palm. But for those of you that aren't here, you know, we, we, we see input side being including seeds that go into production, the materials and so forth. And um, um, also certification agencies that are involved across, that are involved across the value chain. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at the processes by which um, the cocoa is transformed from pod breaking to fermentation, drying, packing and bagging, through to grading, trading and marketing, and so forth. So we've really tried to use this opportunity to help us compartmentalize the, the value chain. And so therefore making sure that we're also having conversations across 
across this value chain. Next slide. So what have we been hearing so far in terms of the challenges? Like I mentioned at the very start, we're at this very start of the journey and have seen 25 challenges across, um, across the value chain. And we'll start on the input side. And again, this is certainly not an exhaustive list nor a prioritization list. It's about um, sharing with you all here what we've been learning and hearing and as constant thematics that have arisen across the value chain. On the input side, um, some of the things we're hearing are focused around the materials that go into um, that go into the, the production, uh, into the um, procurement and development of uh, these oven dryers. So um, we've heard that sometimes the, the materials are unsuitable, um, in, in particular in a, in a context around PNG, and they're not necessarily locally adapted, and often they degrade quickly due to the humidity and so forth. The pipes also rust very quickly due to the high, you know, high mucus content that, that cocoa that exists in the cocoa in PNG. And this leads to rapid acidification of the pipes and therefore uh, some of the exacerbation of issues around smoke tank that we're hearing. Um, we also hear there's a lack of access to high quality materials um, and steels that, that can be used for some of the kilns. Um, for example, the costs of um, these materials can be very high and unaffordable, but also the supply chains for these materials are not necessarily that developed uh, in PNG and the logistics to get access to these mater materials in the regions that need it most um, sometimes can be lacking. We've also heard that uh, insurance is a, is a key component of this, that um, you know, lack of financial products in the region that help protect farmers making capital investments and make taking you know taking the step to to invest in uh, new equipment or, um, or facilities uh, is a barrier, and also we also we're also hearing that um, uh, the unclear design principles. So uh, you know with a lot of these uh, oven dryers, there's so much customization. There's a lot of variability in the design, and as a result, there is variability in the way it's up kept and also variability in the actual um, cocoa drying process itself. We've also heard um, that there's a high number of uh, dryers in the region, several thousand dryers, and it's increased rapidly. What's the cause of this is it has, um, it's has placed emphasis and challenges across the resourcing required to monitor and maintain the quality of these, um, of these dryers as well. If we move to the processing, um, primary processing uh, side of it, we're also hearing that alternative drying technologies that have been trialed through other programs and, um, and producers in the region, uh, that there is challenges around affordability. And again, some like solar dryers, we've heard a lot, and the polycarbonate sheets, for example, are very costly to get access to. And the payback periods often um, used just for a singular crop like, um, like cocoa means that the payback periods are quite long. Um, the suitability of alternative drying equipment is also quite challenged, given the, that uh, in, in the PNG climate, there's often high humidity, that cloud cover is constant, and, and often harvesting occurs at the peak uh, rain season. And so there's sometimes some of these solutions do not provide sufficient heating intensity to, to provide the quality that's needed. Um, we also hear that uh, maintenance of these dry facilities are often quite poor. Um, they're not typically planned ahead of time. And so, um, you know, this reduces the longevity of some of these facilities. And another example in the primary processing segment is that, um, you know, there's, there's been prohibitive or, or regulation that has meant that there's, um, it hasn't been able to attract the capital that's required. So to own a, a fermentary and dryer, uh, you need to be a smallholder, you need to be a farmer or landowner. And so those that have capacity to invest and um, potentially set up a drying as a service model, as an example, uh, generally cannot be involved because they don't, they may not be in the production side. So there are regulatory barriers potentially that may have impede or impact on this as well. If we move to the next bit around warehousing, uh, some of the things that we're hearing is the importance of quality assessment and not just the cost, but the, the um, real-time nature of that and the, the, um, the point in, at the supply chain that where it makes sense. So the very first point of aggregation where uh, you can be testing for quality and providing therefore quality 
um, quality-based pricing can really help to create transparency and certainty around um, the quality of cocoa and therefore send price signals back up the value chain that could help drive farmer behavior. So we've heard that that's a, a, a potential challenge space that could be worth looking at. Um, there's also a lack of ability to physically sort and segregate smoke tainted beans. So how do we make sure that there's, um, there's the logistics capability and warehousing capability to ensure that it's separated from the bulk of the, um, the, bulk of the, the exports? Finally, on the, in the market side, we've heard that in, in some markets, a smoky hammy flavor is, is actually re, uh, nicely regarded, but we hear that you know, the hydrocarbons and carcinogenic nature of, of smoke tank can be a challenge. So health is certainly a, a key part of this and, and is a concern for market. Um, we also hear that the long-term contracts um, that typically give certainty in pricing uh, for smallholder farmers is not quite, it, there's a lack of it. Um, and so therefore this again may impede um, investment across the value chain. Um, market perception of smoke taint is certainly a challenge. And we've heard that, you know, moving from IC, uh, the ICCO downgrade from 90% to 75% has not just hurt uh, some key exporters, but it's a, it's a common thematic that's been addressed by industry. And there's questions around, um, you know, market access in the near future. Uh, license to operate and using wood burning um, into the future where in, 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 in this day and age where a lot of these large companies are starting to um, you know, deploy ESU practices and, and look at you know, agroforestry and wood burning as a process for that is often challenging. And then smoke taint uh, is also an issue we recognize, but we have to be hyper-targeted because some supply chains in PNG uh, don't have that. And, um, and some companies are managing that extraordinarily well. And so we have to be very targeted in our approach. So that's certainly a challenge that we're facing in that, uh, across this market side too. So that's just, um, there's, there's lots more, <laughs> but um, just wanted to quickly, quickly fly through that just to give you a sense as to what we're uncovering in our challenge uh, diligence process. Next slide, Justin. So for us to really um, leverage our graph platform and really hone in and start focusing on areas um, that we feel that we can leverage um, the, the graph platform and also um, reach out to uh, reach out to the right networks globally, we've kind of we've placed three lenses across uh, the challenges that we're seeing today. Those that are being um, leveraged through policy and regulation, those that have a technical and innovation component to it, and those that require a focus on capacity building. Um, and education and training. So if we, once we overlay that, we can see that, um, you know, that, that there is about 14 challenges that um, the graph platform we feel is, is well positioned to help um, shift on. But the other areas that are in the blue and orange are important. It's important we don't lose uh, those insights and we're sharing that with the industry, whether they're policymakers, industry groups and actors that can influence this. Uh, we'll certainly be bring, surfacing that um, during those conversations. But for the graph challenge, uh, and we're very much focused on some of the, these 14 areas. Next slide, Justin. Oh, sorry, yeah, next one. So these are the 14 areas that um, are really, we're really um, hyper-focused on over the next, over the next uh, stage of our challenge process. Um, great, now that we've kind of flown through that, uh, we've got one final interaction in the last 10 minutes of this. And really this is an opportunity for, uh, for two, two things. One is for those in the cocoa industry who've just kind of had the chance to sit back, uh, look at the value chain and hear about some of the insights that we're hearing. Um, just to share with us uh, in here, what, um, what you, where you think are the biggest opportunities that we might target and um, that we should focus our efforts on. But recognizing also that there's many many outside of uh, the cocoa industry here today. Please share with us what you've learned today in terms of how you feel that a, a program like Graph can really benefit um, and be used to help elevate challenges in your industry and region. And so um, we'll leave it, I'll leave it here and I'll hand it over to Bikash, um, but looking forward to seeing what uh, everyone is inputting here. So thanks very much. Thank you, Will, for giving such a great summary of the background work that we have been doing and all the you know meetings and interviews that have been conducted the literature that we have reviewed so 
you have summarized it quite well, and I think it's quite insightful as well. Uh, now, uh, you know, we began with a general challenge. Now we are just focusing on challenge related to cocoa sector and the challenge related that we are trying to tackle through graph PNG 2022. So if you could just uh, again, log into Slido and use the code and give us some of the challenge, highest impact challenge that graph PNG can help to solve. Uh, it would be very much appreciated. So I can see that some of the participants are already typing in. So I would request everybody present in the room to once again, start uh, typing in your, you know, the challenge statements that you would like graph PNG to solve. Yep, I can see the number increasing. Now it's three participants who are typing in. Okay, so the first one is in. Given the low level of analysis and presentation, it seems doubtful graph would be in a position to provide any assistance. Well, uh, the process, as I said, has just begun and we are yet to do a lot of uh, research in this area. So uh, this is just a beginning and an icebreaker, let's say, to introduce ourselves and what we are intending to do. So there will be lots of other activities. We will have uh, the team members come in to PNG and have physical site visits and have physical meetings as well. So the process has just begun and we will be collecting a lot of information and uh, working towards identifying the main challenge that we need to tackle. Uh, yes, the identification of smoke taint at farm level, definitely that's something we want to look into as well. Uh, Okay, we have one more participant typing in their challenge statement. Getting full buy-in and non-politely complete cooperation from the PNG COCO board and the government. The solution to many of these problems is well known. The real challenge is the implementation as has been learned in other parts of the COCO world with smoke tainted beans such as Brazil and Indonesia. Yes, uh, our team will also be talking to various stakeholders in cocoa sector from around the world uh, to you know identify the challenge and also to propose a solution so definitely these are very much welcome the challenge statements that have been put forward here the suggestions that have come in and the question and answers that have been raised are very much helpful for us to move ahead and actually you know uh, take the process forward so thank you very much for all your participation. Now, uh, I think let's just move on to our uh, last part of this webinar. Okay, so the last part, as I said earlier, uh, is like where we go from here. And as I have mentioned earlier, and as our other team members have also mentioned, this is just the beginning of the process. We have done a lot of uh, background work, but we are still not complete yet. The team from Beanstalk and the MDF team will be conducting some uh, ground level visits and meetings as well. So for that, uh, look forward to our email communication wherein we'll be getting in touch with you to come and uh, visit you in person. And we have certain uh, workshops in plan as well. So there will be workshops to determine the most pertinent challenge to work on. And hence our next step, uh, I would like to request for you to reach out to us now, if you are an organization in PNG's cocoa value chain who are keen to partner with us to tackle smoke taint or any other critical challenge in cocoa sector itself, uh, if you are a cocoa industry expert, technical service provider, or startup support guru, an agribusiness in any other commodity space interested in adapting the graph program for a challenge in your sphere, so all these people, whoever you are, you are most welcome to reach out to us, and we very much welcome your suggestions, your inputs, and we are open to discussion as well we need as much participation as possible and we would like and request you to come forward and write to us and these are the people you can contact if you want to reach out uh, we have justin from beanstalk and his email address is mentioned or you can contact me directly uh, at mdf i'm in papua new guinea so you can write to us and uh, just to remind you the recording of this webinar, as well as other materials uh, that have been developed, 
we will be sharing with all of the registered participants today itself. So you can write back in you reply to that email. And if you have any suggestions, we would very much welcome all the suggestions that are given. And thank you all for your patience and your time today. Uh, we are grateful to your presence and we look forward to talking to you again soon and have a great day, everyone. Thank you.